What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Tone, one half of the best black movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. This episode of the Black Blusters podcast is brought to you by Amazon Prime. Prime is more than just free shipping. Prime brings you closer to the things you care about today through shopping, streaming, and savings. For example, did you know that you can listen to your favorite podcast, like ours, through Amazon Music? Yup. You can also watch your favorite movies, like the ones we review on Blackbusters on Amazon Prime Video. Yup. But it doesn't stop there. You can use Prime to get more out of your interests. From purchasing behind-the-scenes books about your favorite movies, to listening to soundtracks of your favorite films. Yup. Yup. And yup. Whatever you're into, or just getting into, Prime can help you get closer to it. Visit Amazon.com forward slash Prime to sign up. From movies and music, to passions and podcasts. It's on Prime. You are now tuned into the Carefree Black Girl podcast, where we're discussing everything Carefree Black and Girl. Hey, ladies. What's up? We have Bree on the line. Bree, how you doing? Hey, y'all. How are y'all doing? We're, we're good. We also have a guest today. Introduce yourself for us. Um, hello everyone um, my name is queen i'm one half of the tea with queen and jay podcast and i'm also the editor-in-chief of mix vixen magazine a magazine for black women so y'all before we get into the conversation the good stuff make sure y'all take a second and subscribe that's the most important thing that we need subscribe to, to us if you are using itunes on the podcast wherever you are listening to the carefree black girl podcast make sure to subscribe hashtag you can even google it Carefree Black Girl Podcast. Um, definitely follow us on Instagram, Carefree Black Girl underscore Inc. And CFBG Pod on Twitter. Yes, if you have any questions for us, any ideas, if you want to hear us talk about anything, email us, Carefree Black Girl Podcast at gmail.com. All right, now let's get back into the conversation. Let's do this, baby. Okay. I love that. No, Mixed really Vixen, <laughs> a magazine for a black woman. Yes. Explain to us Mixed Vixen and how did you come up with that? Um, so Mixed Vixen is, the premise is that it's all for black women, black femmes specifically. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I, if you look at other black women publications, we always have to say the word black as if we're not the standard. And that's not what I do. Like we're the standard. We don't see other magazines where they say white whatever okay white is the standard so that is kind of the different approach that i take when it comes to mix vixen and his vision yeah. awesome i just saw a post today that was like for black girls only how did like just put that in your life or whatever and it was just like always having to search black i mean hairstyles for black women yeah, exactly. or makeup for, for black, black women, women exactly or even when you're looking up haircuts or whatever you have to put in like bobs for black, black women exactly yeah. if, if even if you google like afro and that's our shit that's mad true. white people will pop up with afro wigs which is crazy and that's yeah, our shit that. you have to put black woman in the afro to like get a black woman with an afro which is crazy and dreads too yeah definitely dreads and too. for braids it's mm -hmm. weird because mm -hmm. i've been looking up like braids for black women or like for black hairstyles it's crazy how oh, my eyelash done fell off guys yeah i'm <laughs> over here looking crazy but um i just wanted to get into like i went to this fashion show no it wasn't a fashion show look at me lying it was an art exhibit at the Milk Gallery in Chelsea, and it was the Gucci Ghost. And I thought it was so dope because, like, they had like this, like they had like this car filled with like Gucci bags. Like, I low key wanted to just take one home, but I'm like, let me not. But it was just like <laughs> the designs, the art was so cool. They was playing like Migos, and it was just like real young. Um, but Dodge, you was saying how. Some like that wasn't an original idea by like yeah, the designer. Well, I actually wish that I got to go to that exhibit. Today um, is the what's last. The, what time it end? Do you know? I I know it ends today. I don't know the time, but it is, it was free. Oh, it was dope. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I I wish I would have gotten a chance to go. Maybe after the recording today, but I was reading on the designer Gucci Ghost and how he was hired for like the Gucci design team he basically was just like a graffiti artist and um, he was always fascinated with Gucci it was one of his favorite brands so what he did like 
he created a ghost and put the eyes as the Gucci symbol. And um, he was just hired to be on a team. But there's this black girl. Her name is Sonique Saturday. And she, I guess, used to make bags. She would take a replica of a designer bag. So they were fake. But she would paint, like, fake Gucci on it. And Gucci Ghost, like, did you see that where... They were saying I'm bags or the jackets real Gucci. Yeah, yeah. It was saying like there was a whole painting that was just like Gucci or real Gucci or Gucci is real. It was all of that was around. The jackets yeah. were fire. The she, bags. I were guess fire. she came up with that and saying like how he kind of stole it and it kind of reminded me of the Peaches Monroe situation with like the fleek word. But it's crazy because she voiced so her opinion people. and it was just like. Whatever. He's the one a, that got hired it was by a black Gucci. Woman yeah. We don't listen to black women speak. Exactly. And, and that's that that irks me because it's just like we really are like the mother. I know I say this on every other episode. All but the time. <laughs> we are <laughs> like we are like the tastemakers. We are like like everything stems from a black woman. Like and it's just sad. I mean, I definitely want to look into her because I honestly never heard of her until now or whatever. Like you was telling me. Shout out to Rihanna, though. At least she's, like, doing it big for black women right now in the beauty industry. Like, Fenty is turning so many heads and is projected to, like, pass the Kylie lip kit and Kim Kardashian's (laughs) beauty line. I don't know if y'all saw that meme that's going on that's saying that, like, um, Kylie is pregnant. So it was, like, somebody on Twitter. But is that a fact? I don't know. But on... I, I know it was a Who black cares? person on Twitter. <laughs> Who cares? But I've been hearing that. It's like they a had, real thing. They have put like that meme. I don't know if you ever saw that meme of Kim looking from the bushes and it was just like Kim leaking that Kylie is pregnant because everyone's just been talking about Fenty the past couple of days. I was dead. Oh, wow. I actually didn't see that meme. But that's funny. That the, nah, thing that that funny. I, the thing that I love most about Fenty. The thing is, though, the demand has always been there. I just feel like they literally just ignore black women. And wanting to have an inclusive brand. And it's crazy because so many brands, they saw what was happening with Fenty Beauty and how she actually had um, 40 Shade range on her first launch. And then they all started, you know, posting on Instagram or Twitter, like, oh, we have shades for you. But girl, your brand is how old? How long did it take you to make those shades? Like, I think it got to a point where they're starting to realize that, like, we put our money where our mouth is which I think just needs to continue in every aspect. I mean, obviously, it's very relevant in beauty and fashion, but it can even be something so minor as, like, what you choose to watch. Like, I know me personally, I'm not watching the NFL because I feel as though you it comes down to making a decision about where you're going to place your money. And brands really be trying to punk black women. Like, oh, like, we know we did X, Y, Z to y'all in the past, but y'all are still going to come back and spend your coins. And it's like, no, we're not. We're tired of that now. Like, there's, we, there needs to be a change in a lot of spaces to include us in our buying power. Like, we put so much into this economy, and we just have to be smart about where we place that energy. Yeah. That's true. And we need people like you to currently remind us. Right. <laughs> That's Go the- get Breeze plant-based book. school though before we really get into it because y'all you're out there getting your masters you writing books you cooking <laughs> phd um so school is school is school is a lot so just i mean i'm again my tuition is free 99 so amen amen I'm <laughs> but this university is really like lacking on in diversity and inclusion So, like, there's basically been, like, hate crimes done on campus. Whoa. They're not going to call them hate crimes, obviously. They don't want to be associated with having, you know, neo-Nazis and racists on their campus, but they're there. Like, they have this space on 
campus for for graduate students that are um, students of color, basically so we can like hang out, talk, share our grievances, just kind of vent, like not be in a space where we're always being policed about what we say or how we express ourselves because we're a person of color. But um, I'm actually the first black person in my program. I didn't know that until I got here, obviously, because if I did, that would have, you know, I would have mentally prepared myself to deal with this like new way of thinking in some of my classes. But long story short, people deface the space where cultural students are. They put white lives matter. They put, oh, this is a space for hate. Um, they use a little Pepe meme that space has been taken over by like Republicans and neo-Nazis basically trying to intimidate students of color from using the space, basically saying like, oh, we see how you guys want to separate yourselves and we're going to try to incite fear. So, and I've been here for four, four weeks, y'all. Like school has started for four weeks, I should say. And I'm already dealing with racist shit. And I'm just like, damn, like, there is no black people. I get it. But I just also, and I, that doesn't bother me. It just bothers me the fact that I have to share my space with blatantly racist people. And the administration doesn't do anything about it. Oh, that's hard. I that went to hard. school with, like, grade school from elementary to high school with all white people. Like, being the only black girl in majority of my classes, being the only black girl in the cheerleading tank. And it was hard from day one dealing with, like, racism, being thrown mm-hmm. in that environment. Because you, you know, people from the outside looking in, we see it. But once you're actually in the environment and it's happening, like, I remember buying little girls ice cream in elementary to have a table to sit with, with kids. Like, it was hard. And they probably weren't that's, used to me, crazy. but it was really, like, it's crazy wow. that this is happening in 2017. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's very mentally draining. I yeah, because like, 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 the thing is, I don't think people understand. That's like a huge macro. No, go ahead. What you Like, there's microaggressions and then there's macroaggressions, and that is a huge macroaggression. Like, how are you supposed to like thrive and actively learn and flourish when you have like people telling you you ain't shit? Right. Every every turn of the day. Exactly. Yep, and we all we talked it's about very, self-esteem, too. Like, like, that's violence. That's actual violence. That's mental violence. Um, and that's the thing. They won't even say it's a hate crime. They'll be like, oh, because they used, literally, their their defense was, oh, the students used um, dry erase markers instead of permanent markers, so it's not a hate crime. Are you fucking serious? Like, what? So what is... Some- like, I, would, I, sh- I actually need to forge off the email. Like, that they literally mean. said it's because they use dry erase markers that it doesn't make it a hate crime. So because, because it's not permanent? Because it it's not permanent. That doesn't matter. They still wrote it. But that's not... That's still permanent. Like, regardless if you could wash something off the wall, does not mean that it is not something permanent that is affecting. Right. It's permanent. It's semi-permanent. She saw it just how we're still like, talking about it today. It like, was permanent. It left an impression. That's crazy. And we saw it. Like, exactly. But it's crazy. What are some things that you do that, like, help you kind of, like, you know, like, what? Are, what is, how do you cope? That's a good question. Um, so I'm here by myself. So that's the part about it. So my boyfriend actually ended up getting a job, um, on the East coast. So he had to stay. And so it's been hard for me. Cause I mean, I've lived with him for the past two years. So I'm really used to at the end of the day, like, you know, being able to come home and then, but now I find myself just writing a lot. Um, living on your own is strange because it's like, you really get to know yourself in a totally different way. Like, I don't have my siblings running around. I don't have my housemates, you know, cooking or watching movies or playing video games. Like, it's it's quiet here if I don't make any noise. Like, it's all about kind of me and my own space. Do you so like that, journal- Brie? Do you think that, do you like living alone? Um, okay, so I think it's taught me a lot about myself. But I don't think I can last for years by myself. Like, my boyfriend is definitely still trying to make because he's an engineer, so they have contracts. Mm-hmm. So once this contract's up, he's going to try to get a new contract somewhere here, whether it's not in my town, even if it's like three hours, four hours away, just to be somewhat closer. Because it's hard to, like, you be feeling lonely. And the thing is, like, it's a different kind of lonely, whereas, like, you don't have anyone to talk to. Because I have people to talk to, it's just I don't share my space with anyone. So it's a really big adjustment. But, um, like I said, I, I and I also don't really like to call my parents about it. Like the person who knows the most, obviously, is my partner because I talk to him on a consistent basis. But it's like you also do this thing where you try not to call your parents or your family and tell them how you're feeling because then they feel bad about not being able to support you or like fly you back and forth because of finances. So, I mean, it's just taught me, honestly, just a lot about myself. Um, it's taught me a different way of self-care. I realized for so long that I was doing self-care more of like 
not to be trendy, but doing self-care the way that I thought it should be done. And now that I live here, I realize that there's actually work. Like self-care is work. Self-care, self-care is, is action. Is it's, it's a it verb. Is. It like is. you can't say, oh, like self-care is an adjective. Like it describes something like, no, like I have to find time to journal or I'll be stressed out. Like I have to go to the gym four times a week or I'll cry every day. Like I have to do the action in order to sustain myself mentally and emotionally because, um, yeah, it's a lot, but I don't want to come. I don't want to sound complaining, but to answer your question, I guess that's how I cope. I find out what works for me and I, and I do the work, whether that be journaling, eating good, trying to eat home cooked meals, um, going to the gym. Sometimes I watch that on um, baller wives or black <laughs> in Chicago. Like I do things I fully that. detached from what I do. It's weird yeah, no. cuz like I didn't think I was going to get into Ball of Wives and I'm still like figuring out everyone's character because I just like watched maybe an episode or two but reality TV is really hilarious. It, it it's sad but it's hilarious and I think I definitely mm-hmm. like it makes me it really want to work it's different in that. From my field. real life. Not- Shop Amazon for last minute gifts. Great deals for everyone on your list. Gifts for mom and gifts for dad. Even for your sister and your brother, Chad. Ah, shoot, we didn't realize we were supposed to get a gift for our dog walker guy. We almost forgot about our dentist, Dr. Kerr. We didn't expect to get a gift from her. Or our cousin, I forget his name. He got us something nice, better reciprocate. For last minute deals on gifts for people you forgot. Get fast and free shipping at Amazon. I need to detach for a second. Mindless television is like what I use to cope, like period. Because I need things where I'm not always thinking about how being a black woman affects everything right. in my life. Yeah. Everything in my life. So like if I have to want something mindless mm-hmm. to like not even think about me being a black woman I'm in not, that moment, I'm gonna fucking do that. I'm not shit. even gonna hold you. I don't know if y'all watch Kirby Enthusiasm, but that show, um, and it's weird because I'm so like pro black everything, but I find white comedy to be hilarious. <laughs> like, so Larry Davis used to write, like he used he was a writer on Seinfeld and now he has like this HBO show. It was about seven, eight seasons now. They bringing it back. It ended like in 2009. Mm-hmm. When I tell y'all this is like the funniest show. It's like it's. I don't know if y'all into Friends, yeah, but it's, I, I, I love yeah, Friends. It's like I, I think that, that the reason why, because I'm into it too, but yeah. I think the reason that I am is because it's very mindless, and white people get yes. the space to be mindless and not really do much. That's true, and still like be doing point. shit. We don't really get that privilege to like just like be mediocre and like not really do much. Do, like we do gotta much. shoot we have to above do above the stars. Like black people have to really be funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like Kevin Hart to me is like the only part because he's so sarcastic. So I think that's why like white people are into him, like Kevin No Hart. I think but, white people are into him because he's like a um, what do they call it? A physical comedy. Like he's not just like yeah, like standing there just talking. Like it's a whole. It's like a whole theatrical uh, thing I, happening. I was made for that. So you know how like in music you have those people that cross over, they like, can get like, and that to me is what. Kevin Hart is like he's dead a crossover like I find Mike Epps to be hilarious but you know like he's funny amongst us like you know he, like Kevin Hart is wow. dead you know that's crazy just everything that's going on in the media man. yeah so did y'all hear about um the NFL and it's a rumor I don't know but that the NFL supposedly like wanted Jay Z to do the halftime performance, and he was and like, he nah, declined, yeah, yeah because yeah. of the whole He's like Colin like, Kaepernick situation. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. As he should, I would have been. And the NFL tried to like put out a statement as if like there were no decisions made, but didn't try to include Jay Z as if like they got turned down or whatever. And I guess it happened last year. They tried to get Adele to do it, and she said no, and they got Gaga. But I think that's funny. Oh, like, like, go hoes. So- <laughs> That's, you listen to Beyonce. Okay. Just no, to honestly, that brings up a point, though, where black people need to start making decisions. Like, at the end of the day, regardless if you if you make, regardless of your tax bracket, because obviously Jay-Z is not in my tax bracket at all. <laughs> but we have to do things as a collective in order for it to be impactful. Like, the fact that he did that basically meant, like, okay, like, right now I'm not fucking with the NFL because y'all are blatantly supporting one, this administration, and two, the fact that you're using your players as object as objects. You're not looking at them as humans. 
Like they de- they dehumanize the, the people that they the, the the athletes in the NFL so much. Where now we're here to I guess yesterday the the Trump referred to Colin Kaepernick as a son of a bitch. Yeah. And mm-hmm. said that like he's glad that he lost his job. Wait, what did he because call he him? Because he doesn't stand for the anthem. It's too like, much name that's calling I, going on. Didn't LeBron call uh, I, Trump a bum today? It's well, a lot that's, going on. that's good, though. Like, he should call him a bum. I would understand yes, why. Yes, he is. Yeah. He said you bum. Donald Trump you. as the president of, well, y'all's little president because he ain't mine. <laughs> but Donald Trump as that person, you're held to a different regard. You're not, like, have... If we any of the things that he does that Obama even thought to do, like just think thought, mm-hmm. we didn't even do it. Yes. He would not be in office that he is. Jay Z so said it was that's a joke. Black like, people have to be perfect. White people just got to be good. No, enough. but honestly, Wait. it makes my stomach turn when I watch this stuff in the in the crowds cheer like uncontrollably cheer. Yeah. People is nasty. it's almost like, like he's inciting. No, it's it literally it makes me feel physically ill, okay. and that's why I think we all need to be boycotting the NFL. We don't need to be watching no games Sunday, Thursday, or Monday. We don't need to be partaking in that. Like we need to pull our monies away. Like start looking at advertisers. Like okay, like why do y'all support a brand that not like the owners gave Trump a combined like nine million dollars? That's insane. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Like that- it's just we need to watch. You saying that Watch where the money goes. You saying that kind of reminded me of like how did y'all feel? Okay, so how you were just saying black people need to stand up or whatever. Um, how did y'all feel when Chrisette Michelle performed for oh, Trump? God. Like actually Trump, and she, i mean because people because you know we, you have we, um, we definitely spoke about this and we just we definitely spoke about this. i didn't for me personally i didn't have much feelings because i people People's relationship to white supremacy and people's relationship to how they cope with that, how they deal with it, and how they um, waddle through it is completely different. So, like, I wasn't even surprised because there's mad fucking black people who are like Chrisette Michelle who think they have to um, entertain white supremacy or that they have to. Or have to be the voice of reason. That, but more so, like, like we like we feel, and I say we, because even if I don't fuck with you personally, if you're right. a black person, we are we. Um, but we feel that we have to still prove something to white supremacy, or we still have to do stuff within their systems. And it's like, fuck that system. The system that that is was not made with me in mind. It's working exactly the way it is. So it's fuck that whole system, like, period. Like for me personally, yeah. so like when I see stuff like that, I'm just like, well, this is just regular, regular like black shit, honestly, because I don't think a lot of people understand that it's fuck that system, period. Do our own shit, because it's never going to work if you're trying to work within a system that is made for you to be on the bottom. Right. It's such a battle because I, I feel like, like I have like white colleagues, and I'm very like y'all yeah, know I'm very like again. I'm not I'm not racist or anything, but I like my dad is prejudiced against white people. So mm-hmm. I grew up with that like tolerance, dealing with it like for my mom on some like, you know what, like all oh, white people are not bad. And then my dad over here, like white people are the devil. Like so I'm yeah, literally in was, the middle. That's my house. And it's my like and my father. Right. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's like like it's really like no no balance, right? So I like Meet certain white people, and it's like they give me cool vibes at the same time. It's like, damn, y'all will never understand, like, ever. Like, even in the office, like, trying to, like, educate my colleague on just hip-hop culture. And it's just, like, I have to tell her, like, this is not a, this isn't a genre. Like, this is a lifestyle. Like, hip-hop is really a lifestyle. It came from so much. So, like, you know, I try not to be so, like, take it offensive, like, or be offended when she doesn't like certain hip-hop. Because it's just like, do you know what they're talking about? Like, do you? You but got me thinking get, about brown sugar. But it's like, <laughs> it's so, but it's it's, it's always going to be a disconnect, even though their vibe is cool. It's like. I think, I think um, that you should probably, and I don't have all the answers. Right. But I think that you should probably differentiate white supremacy and white people. All right. Those are two different things. So, like, there are white people that you mm-hmm. yes, you get along with, but they still benefit from white supremacy. So they're right. not actively trying to oppress you as it's your true. friend, right. as a white person. But they they have this privilege that they're going to be unaware of because they've always been this white ass person their whole right. life. You know what I mean? That's true. And then maybe you should take some of the labor off of yourself. It's not your job to teach them shit about 
being black. True. It's it's not, and um, that's not really like my intent to be like this is what it's like being black. But if we are like having a conversation, and I feel like you're wrong, I I'm gonna oh, take I that you. moment yeah, to be corrected. Yeah, I'm not gonna definitely. just allow you to just continue to go into the world and be ignorant. Like rather, if you choose, like that's your choice to be ignorant. But I want to make sure your encounter with me, I'm like giving you like. But you, what you know what's interesting about that? I used to be that way when I was in a space where there were black people to share that workload because what you're talking about is essentially a form of labor, yeah. like mental and emotional to always yeah. like try to give cue cards to white folk on how to act. Mm-hmm. Or, like, we talked about that before. That's I remember a it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yeah. And that's why now that I'm the only black person in most of my spaces, I gave that job up. I quit. I washed my hands <laughs> of it because I realized that like I could do that in New Jersey and be fine because at the end of the day, I wasn't the only black person doing it. But here, because of the numbers, I obviously am the only black person doing it. And it's so frustrating, y'all. Like, I'm not trying to talk too much shit because I don't know who you, like, follow me or, like, might listen to this podcast just to figure out what I do on, like, outside of class. But there are some people at my school, and when they open their mouth and talk about black people, I want to slap the shit out of them. It's like I know you've never met a black person in your whole life for you to, one, say that, and two, be so comfortable to say it around me. But then I remind myself, like, I am, for one, not going to take myself out of character. And then also, like, your ignorance and the fact that you're in this space as far as, like, being an an academic, like, you got here being that ignorant, like, it's going to blow back in your face eventually. It might not be my job, but the way I know my God and the way karma works, like, it's going to come back around. I'm, I I know, I think it's, I felt that. I think it's good that y'all or that people do that work. But it's also don't feel ever feel obligated to tell a white person about their own history Word. and make them own that shit. Like, don't feel bad if you don't want to do that work. But at the same time, I give people like Ivy props for doing it because I I realize that shit's not for me no more. Well, you got to catch me on a good day. And I'm going to say that. <laughs> Every day is not a day where I'm out here educating people. And some days I'll be like, bitch, what you just said? Like, but I'm just learning, like, because I, I just never want to just, like, assume that all white people know what be like you know so like like if I feel like it's a teachable moment like I'll definitely teach but like I said if I'm on a train and I'm coming home when I'm tired mm-hmm. yeah I, I I can't help I you there sir I want to add an antidote maybe because everyone doesn't know me here right. but I the way I was raised I was like engulfed in blackness like my mm-hmm. parents made sure that I was like black 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 everything all my schools all my whatever right. so I think that's why I could be a little detached from feeling like I need to teach these people right. because um, I've even like when it comes to people who are not white, we have to learn how to interact in this in their world um, and code switch and all of these things. And I just decided a really long time ago I'm not going to do that. So I look for jobs where I could have blue dreads and I look for you know like all of these space like I make wow. sure I protect myself right. in that way because it's just for me personally it's just too much work for me to do all of that shit. So I try to create spaces for myself, and it's unfortunate that um, you can't do that where you are because it's like, what did you say, 12 of you are and you're the only one in your program? But I know for me, like, yeah, that's how I, like, protect my sanity is to just be around us. And, of course, I have to interact with other people, but to know that you have a safe place a safe to haven. go, yeah, it's like, it helps a lot. Wow. So you just shut yourself into the black community. Yeah, I, I, yeah, like, but even, <laughs> I but, respect but it, but hey. even when it comes to like, um, cause I work at my, my job, there's white people there and, and all of that stuff, but I work at a nonprofit organization that is providing services for children that look like me. So even though like the person who owns the company is a white man, he, we are still able to have these conversations. I still feel s- safe with him talking about these things because I'm really particular about my energy and who I'm around and who I have in those spaces. So I didn't, and I think it's because of how I grew up that I just became really weary about that for myself to protect myself. And I'm not saying it's foolproof and I'm like all protected and don't nobody fuck with me. Cause that's not true. But like, for me, it's just, it's helped so much. So it kind of breaks my heart to hear her not have that at all in anywhere. It's yeah. That it, for me too. Cause I, like I said, I've been there and I'm even dealing with now, what you were saying about like protecting your energy. I talk about that all the time. I think it's so important to be in environments where 
you know what I mean? You can be yourself. Yeah. You feel comfortable. Um, there's not people where, you know, you just walk into spaces and you could literally feel bad energy mm-hmm. or how because we come from different backgrounds and, you know, this may be a corporate place. I can't even have a tone or something that I could have with my girlfriends exactly. on a regular yeah. basis or yeah. say things that I've been saying from a child and you take it the wrong way. And now. I'm but an angry black woman. I just, yeah, I want to yeah. ask a question because um, you were just like, you know, you golfed yourself. What word you use? I, I think I said in golf. I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> but like, um, are all black spaces safe spaces? No, definitely not. Um, definitely not. And as I grew up, I started to realize who was, who was my tribe, who was a part of what can add to me rather than take from me. Right. Um and there are people in my tribe who are not black, but they accept me and my black female self. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, like, those are the things. And I, as I got older, I and I, I I get it now because my grandmother used to always say this, like, all oh, your skin folk ain't your kin folk. And it's true. Amen. But, and I I know that now. But, you know, you grow and you learn. But, yeah, there's there's there's... I feel there are black people who are agents of white supremacy. Like there are black white supremacists. There are yeah, they're mm-hmm. running mm-hmm. rampant. I think <laughs> what I, what annoys me most is black people feeling the need to always say they're mixed or like, um, yeah, I you know I don't have black hair or like yeah, and it's like what does that even mean? Like yeah, like I know I'm Puerto Rican, but at the end of the day I'm black. So mm-hmm. if you ever was to ask me like forget what my last name says what i like identify with is black that's what i'm that's what i was raised around this episode is brought to you by undeniably dairy dairy farmers are more than farmers they're climate caretakers they see water as a precious resource most farmers recycle water up to four times from chilling the milk to irrigating the crops and some even use technology to turn manure into renewable energy to learn more about what dairy farmers are doing to make their farms more sustainable, visit usdairy.com. That's who my who I love to date. I love black men. I love like my black friends, and there's nothing wrong with being black. And yeah. that, I think that is one of my purpose in life to show like it's literally nothing wrong with being black. Like you know, and I've I've really like even growing up, I've heard like you know, people tell, like, my, my best friend is dark skin, and I've heard people tell her, like, you're beautiful for a dark skin girl. And it's yeah. just, like, as if being light is better. Like, bro, we're black at the end of the day. So um, anyone that's listening that feels like, you know, like they dealing subconsciously with insecurities just of being black because a lot of people won't even voice that, that, you know, they're, like, you know, some people don't know how to deal with being black because of, how their parents are or just like that. Like, I'm not saying, like, my mom was super tolerant, but I think at sometimes, like, I understood why my dad was so aggressive because it's just like, bro, don't be super passive. Like, mm-hmm. you're black and just... She was, like I said, she was very prideful and very, like, you know, sh- sh- like, pro-black, but I did see she was quick to code. Like, you know, when certain people come around, she was quick to speak different. Mm-hmm. Where my dad was like, fuck that. Like, I'm black. I, like... I speak Eba like not you know yeah. I'm smart but I'm gonna use my slang I'm I'm not gonna feel the need to cross my you know cross my T's dot my eyes because other people that don't look like me is around. With that with that scenario, it made me think of my parents too because my dad is my dad like I, I tell you the whole time my dad's a cop, so like when I be like oh police are agents of white supremacy, he be looking at me all crazy and stuff, mm-hmm. but that's how I feel. And then I have my mom who's like, oh, like she she never really interacted with white folk until she got a job because she's from Baltimore City. Mm-hmm. But I realized that they can do different things and like kind of how your parents express their um, their blackness differently. Right. I think it's very gender based, too, because ain't nobody going to come crazy to my dad. But I've seen people come crazy to my mom when she acts a little bit more um I'm trying to think of the word. When she acts the way that she would act if she were home versus the way that she acts in the office. Mm-hmm. Right. When people see that difference in her, they're like, oh, you're being aggressive. Oh, mm-hmm. like, are you okay? Are you in a bad mood? Is something going on? And it's just like, like, she doesn't have the privilege because of her gender to be like, I'm still black as fuck. I hope y'all know that. Because at her job, people will take that internal. 
And they'll be like, oh, like she has a bad attitude. We don't want her working here. Ooh, that's my I, life. So it's also like a form of That's your life. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Elite, 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 elite. I wanted to um, touch bases on this Kanika Jenkins story. I hope I'm saying her name right. Because I didn't see black people drag her friends through the mud. And it's like, we're all, like, I've been seeing all these memes about watch your friends, but I feel like no one's been talking about, there was a, like, I don't know. There's so many stories, like, sis needs to come back and tell us what really happened because it's a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, no one, I, I didn't see no one dragging the guys that allegedly uh, raped yeah, her. I agree. Like, that is crazy. Every, I went on her, like, her friend's Facebook, and they were really going in on these young girls. Like, grown women, grown black women that, I'm just like, at the end of the day, like, there was a legend that she was raped. So, start there. Yeah, but like, that's, that's rape culture. To, like, to blame the person who was raped like rape culture makes you not even point the finger at what may have actually happened so right. we have to like figure out a way to blame women because we don't like women like fuck women we don't like them so we always have to figure out a way to make it a woman's fault yeah right. um and i felt the same way you felt when i seen that because it was just like yo like this is like this is for me all black people we family so it was right. like this is my this is our sister like how are we not? Yeah, that story is very, looking very out touching. Or, or trying to get to the bottom of what happened to us. Had me freaking looking into glasses, <laughs> zooming in, Yo. bro. I can't even see that far, but like Yo. playing real life detective, really like, zooming the phone, really and zooming holding in, like, it. To if watch you hear it, it at this zoom, second, like, you gonna hear help me. Like I'm. That's why. Like after a while, I had to log I off. Had like to stop. I, I was losing oh, I sleep. I was losing sleep it was literally it was because it was so hard. I was watching videos of like mediums and psychics right and read like <laughs> no lie because i'm like i need to know what happened, happened to this girl yeah. like it was mentally and stressful i love what um what Quana said on facebook about like we don't need to be quiet we need to know what happened because yeah, this is yeah. one of us this is our sister right, like yeah. you know how people like just be quiet about it whatever she walked into the freezer. Shut up about it. We not detectives. Like no, f that. We want to know what happened to the girl. Exactly. Like, this exactly. is crazy. Exactly. But it it's a testament to how much we don't care about black women and girls. Like we're in a yep. country where there's estimated forty thousand missing black women and girls, and there's nobody ringing the alarm. Like no one gives a fuck. It's like we live. We're literally all we even, got. Even with I said that with this whole R. Kelly situation, if that was little boys. It would have been a different type of attention and energy yeah. towards that situation. Like to that exactly. to this day, like it still creeps me out. Like I don't know if y'all saw that girl, his um, the one that I guess was like in the in little cult. She oh. was on the reel and just talking about like how she was like had to please him or something like that. I gotta like get more details, but no one is like really into R. Kelly. Like that situation is so creepy to me. Like he got these young girls pleasing him like he's Hugh Hefner or something and kidnapping him like I just oh wait a minute Hugh Hefner's nasty yeah. oh <laughs> wait a minute yeah, you see I be cause I don't really be paying a white he's like, disgusting he just has people. the complexion for protection so like no one pays attention to him the complexion he, for protection ew, he nasty. is wow he's nasty too I just thought about cause I really be so like oblivious to white shit because there's so much going <laughs> on over here. over here so I can't but nah that's nasty 
that that old saggy white man. And white people <laughs> don't age well either. So that there goes that. These little nah. But yeah, I just want people to like kinda like really pay attention to what's going on in our communities, even with our celebrities, even with people we idolize. And just know, like, I get it. Like, we definitely do have to stick together. But sticking together is also calling each other out on our, like, our bullshit yeah, so exactly. we can grow. Exactly. Like, it's no way R. Kelly. I can't listen to our R. Kelly song. I can't either. And it sucks because I was watching Trapped in a Closet the other day. And that that man is a musical genius. Trapped in a Closet was so great. Mm-hmm. But all I could think about is... When I heard trapped in the closet, I'm thinking these little black girls just trapped sit, in the closet. literally <laughs> trapped in the closet. But you know what's, what creeps me out about R. Kelly is that he like, it's like he trolls the shit out of us because then he like calls himself the Pod Piper, and yes. if you know the story of the Pod Piper, he, he like, used to learn music, children. music, lures right. children to that. It's just like he's just trolling oh, wow. the fuck out of us, playing everybody, and just going around and 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 raping girls. Like that's rape. Um. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's just like, like it's just. I know that he called himself that, but I didn't know. It's the just story. crazy that sometimes I hear some of his songs and they're just like rapey as fuck. Yes, like, I, my body's telling me no, but, but my, 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 my my mind is telling me no. Like no, that uh-uh. means no, motherfucker. Like don't listen to your body. Like yo, like it's, it's just, just crazy. It's gross. Like it's he really wrote gross. AJ nothing but a number yes, for Aaliyah. For Aaliyah to sing, who he also she was fifteen, married and he was twenty seven. It's he was, he's disgusting. He's like, but he made songs disgusting. like I believe, like he's it's just such an inner battle. Like, like, like Bree, like you know how you said like self work is really action. Not listening to R. Kelly is action. Like I was at some of it. Oh, my cousin's baby shower, and they play "Step in the Name of Love," and I saw all these black people dance. I'm sitting down like these damn coons. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like. <laughs> I was sitting there mad like I couldn't get up and I was singing it in my head and I'm like fucking R. Kelly I know <laughs> cause that song is so good oh step in there step step and my my the body too, right? was like my body was ready but my mind was just like don't do it that and then again so what am I doing quoting fucking R. Kelly like damn you R. Kelly yeah, yeah. for being a fucking rapey psychopath yeah, but it's, it's disgusting and then it's it's um it makes me think of the notion of like fast girls yeah. and how they already blame you for the, the for being fast. They already, they already blame you for your rape before you're even raped. It's by crazy. calling you a fast girl. Oh, she's fast. Yeah. Oh, she, Look she, how she or oh, she's grown yeah. or oh, put them breasts away. Like all of those, that's language to already make you feel ashamed of yourself before you are even violated. Yeah. And I'm not even going to front like to this day, walking past a group of men, like, I don't know if I was, my whole back literally caves in. Like, it's just so uncomfortable. And it, it shouldn't be like that. Like, I should be able to walk past guys. And be, and get and peace of mind still. No, right? like, I be feeling like. Something always got to be said. Yo, like, like, you you I know how, like, they, they put the worm in the water to get the fish? I be feeling like that worm. Like, oh, my God. Like, I be, it's just sad. And it's like, I have, you know, I'm curvy. And it makes me feel even more uncomfortable. But it's like, I shouldn't be uncomfortable. It should be the guys that feel the need to be like, damn. Like, bro, I'm not a piece of meat. So respect me as if I was your daughter. Respect me if I was your sister or a family member. Like... Not that exactly. is mentally Res- draining. Respect you just because you deserve respect. Like, that's that's what I was you, you don't have, like the proximity to you being a mom or a daughter. Right. Like you shouldn't have to make me related to you to respect. That's true. To respect that's like, true. Just fucking respect yeah. me. Like, like it's so it's so extra. Brie, what you was about to say? Oh no, I'm I'm agreeing with y'all. Like I hate the fact that men only want to treat women right because like we're kin to them like oh like they be i saw the tweet the other day i had matt retweets it was like oh like we need to start tr- treating women better because we have sisters and mothers like what no treat women well because we're humans and we re- deserve that respect not because of how close we are to you or because we're how our connection to another man right. like just be like i hate that like yeah. we deserve human decency at all times times regardless of our attachment to a man or how we're related to someone i hate that argument i think it's bullshit yeah, and that's too. why i think men need to hold each other accountable especially when it comes to the cat calling like that shit's crazy like if you have a homeboy that cat calls girls all the time check your friend like it shouldn't have to be a woman always calling him 
disgusting or a creep. And then he he called the girl out of her name or something for you to be like, hey, yo, chill out. No, tell your man before he even right. comes to the girl. Crazy. Check your man. That he bro. don't need to talk to. <laughs> like, I yes, just, honestly. I want to do an experiment. Like, I want to stand on a corner and catcall and see if men like it. Like, literally, I want to just stand on a corner for eight hours because that's it's a fucking job for them. And be like, hey, yo, cargo pants. Yo, with the Nikes. I like how your Caesars is. You know, like, really go in and be, and then <laughs> you follow them. You over there with the hairline. You over yeah, there. Oh, look at that tape up. Fresh line up. <laughs> follow them for three blocks. Like, you got a, you got a girl. Yo, they you really got a be girl. following you for three blocks, <laughs> for so. three. Yeah, they, I noticed. I always count, like, their limit is three. After three, and you don't give them any number, they be they like. They turn around. They turn around. They're like, all right, God bless you. God, have a beautiful day, beautiful. And it's just like, God bless you, too. Like, you want to go to church? Right. I'm going to start asking them that. Since you want, like, it's so, it's just so much. So, guys, because my brother listens to this, so shout out to Marcus. Um, And I didn't watch I got to put you on mainstream, brother. I'm sorry. Like, I do check him, though. But we in a club. Him and his friends are vultures, bro. And, like, and I be having to, and I be having to tell him, like, women are not meat. Like, come correct when you're approaching them. Don't just, like, start grinding on them. Like, <laughs> it's just yeah. like, you ever had a nigga just walk up to you and start dancing? Like, do you even know I'm in a mood? Like, like, I just I came here to listen up. to the I'm music. I'm just trying to get to the bar. Like, right. I'm just, like, trying to get through. Like, I'm not even, like, <laughs> dancing. I'm just Right, walking. right. You <laughs> could just walk, and they just start dancing on you, and you just... I just stand there until they finish. <laughs> like, all right, I'm going to make you feel dumb, because I'm not, I'm not going to dance back. Like, and they be... Like, girl... You gotta just look back, like, bro. What? I'm just. I just need to go to the bathroom. Like, nah, dudes be killing me. I was walking home from the gym the other day, looking. I do not be looking cute at the gym. Like, I need some workout clothes. <laughs> so I'm walking home. This dude just came up to the side of me, start having a conversation. I had to just hit him with this blankest face. Like, I don't want to talk. He's like, wow, well, like that. Why? They are what? so invasive. <laughs> bye, bye. They are really invasive. <laughs> like, that they'll just crazy. walk up to you. Now I'm doing that today. And I'm, think you want I'm them gonna, on your walk with them. Like, you see me walking by myself. How <laughs> did you just put yourself right next to me on a sidewalk? Like, we walking together. Nah, I'm really about to walk up to a guy. To, and I just, because I really, <laughs> I really want a camera and just see if y'all like that. Like, see if that's part of your day. Like, girls literally looking at your physical and just commenting on it. They probably like that, matter of fact. Okay. Or think so. you joking? No, but something. honestly, some like uh, from my interactions with men, a lot of them get thrown off when they when we object- objectify them because they're so not used to just being a dick. Like I like to reduce a man to his dick so they can know mm. how that feels, and a lot of times they do not like it. Like if you reduce a man down like, to just his say? parts, um, I can't think of anything in particular now, but like it'll be like a guy I'm just fucking with, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, I'll say good morning to the dick, and then it's like. Oh, and, and then they're like, "Well, you're not gonna like say good morning now. to me," but I know it throws them off because it's like they're not used to that. Yeah. But that's what you do to me. Because see, I don't know if we talked about this before, but some women could see. Okay, I cannot just casually have sex. Like I catch feelings mm. if we having sex. So some women can just sleep with a dude like mm-hmm. for the sex or just like I need to do it so I'm calling it, somebody. It just, like, who can I call? Who can I call? I'm not a who can I call a person. Yeah, I gotta. I just. Invest it into like a little vibrator. Congratulations. Oh my God. Like, I'm not going to front. I, I used to make really bad decisions as far as just going back to my ex. I mean, I still do, but we, we, I, I like, I do. like limit my, my bad decisions from like a lot to like maybe once a month. So, but once like. It's only 12 bad decisions a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so far. So I had like, it's. You know how you were just like, oh, you can't. I thought I could ha- casually have sex, but I just realized that I, I definitely do catch feelings after a while, and mm-hmm. then it becomes chaotic, and then that just stems from like just making bad decisions or whatever. Yeah. Like I keep now, like I know I can't be with this person like in a relationship, but I'm gonna still sleep with them because that's just me making a bad decision. Now when I bought my vibrator, it's like it's like all right, bad decision pleasing yourself and being free from the fuckery for yeah. like the next and a, week and a definite orgasm then, like it's not even a, a gamble definite... <laughs> it's not even a gamble oh! <laughs> bro I'm, no i'm getting excited because i don't even want to get into it on the um podcast but fuck it 
I be having to turn my TV up. Like, <laughs> turn my TV up. Like, oh, like legit, it's an automatic. Like, I'm honestly, I don't even know if my next dude can measure up. Like, bro, go get my vibrator because you, you taking too long. <laughs> you got to hit that. Nah, I'm going to start doing that, though. Like, object. go get my vibrator because you, you suck. Right? But you got to start talking to guys because they'll make you feel away. And I feel like, I don't know, just personally for me, like, I be coddling people's feelings, especially, like, don't. guys. Like, don't I'll coddle that. their feelings. Like, if don't they're not that. sexually pleasing, I would never say, like, you're trash. I'll just, like, move a little move bit on. funny. Yeah, like, yeah, I won't answer the calls them. anymore. You will tell them. You will tell them. <laughs> yeah, like, there's so much bad dick out there, and it's because we are throwing it back out there. Like, <laughs> we... <laughs> Like, we're going, we throwing it back out there. we not telling them, like, yo, I need you to work on this, this, and that. And then we pass it over to the next woman. And now she got <laughs> bad sex, too. Better, right? Like, it's not fair. Like, yeah. in the name of sisterhood, we got to stop telling them. In the that. name of sisterhood. <laughs> like, this is whack. Need you no. to work on this. But I think that it's a part of us not, we're, like, we're not taught to make demands. Mm. as women like we're not supposed to demand things so like how are you even going to demand your sexual standard if we're not even told to demand things in like smaller right. spaces or whatever what you just said about like not throwing it back like you know trying to correct the dude and not coddle his feelings so for me i've had an experience like that but i coddled his feelings out of my my own security I'm like, oh, got it. Okay, that's that. I get that. Y'all know how I be talking about Scorpio men. I literally think Scorpio men are hot garbage. Um, yeah, they are. It is, is what it is. I nah, but them. but the sex is different with Scorpios, in my opinion. Like they're they're awful, awful no, but, people. But, as but people, they're trash. Yeah. Yes, people, so, they're trash. Yeah. Those things where you don't want to, you don't want to offend their ego or scar them because the next thing you know, they're gonna be talking about you crazy to everybody around town. Mm-hmm. How do you? And just feel- like oh. it's like they are they're, no, go they're ahead. vindictive. Am I? I think they're vindictive. So that's why, like, I'm all for like telling a man about himself. But sometimes, again, if you don't feel safe doing that work, yeah, if you feel like you know what, that this is, is not true. even my nigga. Like, like, I'll let someone else that, like, really wants to cuff him deal with it. Then go right ahead and let him think that his shit was popping and it wasn't. And then let him still go around looking stupid. Like, that's just been my (laughs) past experience with this. Because I honestly feel like men are crazy as far as, like, misogyny goes. Like, how, when they don't care for women anymore, what they can do. And I'm not trying to get slapped. Or punch because I told right. you your dick was whack. Right. But that's I think just, it's ways yeah, to that's... say it. Well, have y'all ever had to teach? I haven't had bad sex in a while, but have y'all ever had to teach a man? Yeah. Like how to do it right? I guess that would only it's, be if it was bad with somebody who you wanted to invest even... with. It's, I mean, in my opinion, I feel like, I mean, each woman is different. Yeah. So. Like when you when you know what sexually pleases you, like a guy, like that's why I mean relationships are kind of important, and that's why sex should be with a special person. They say because it take it gives that person time to learn your body. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of guys just yeah. go for the nut, and then that's it. They don't really please the women. So I had to like tell like you know it's just important for me if I'm gonna be here. I got to be here for a reason and get mine. So this is what you need to do. You need to slow down or you need right. to curve up yeah, or exactly. you need to lick this spot. You need to touch this. Like, for yeah, me, I can't. For me, I would say it's not about teaching them how to do it or do it right. Mm-hmm. But all vaginas are different. Like, right. No vagina is the same. So you might have been used to whoever you was with before me and whatever that was worked for her. But that doesn't mean it worked for me. So I'm going to teach you how to do it for this vagina. Right. Okay. But um, but if you don't get it right after I keep telling you, you gotta go. <laughs> you got to go. Yeah. Like, how do y'all feel about Aquarius men? Well, oh dang, my my. Okay, so the guy that I had dated for five years was an Aquarius, mm-hmm. and I will say that I've never dated. Is, I'm an Aquarius too, so like there's some there's some you know state in me. There's it's important for me to say that, but I think Aquarius men, if you soften them up a bit because in the beginning it's all there they're always like oh fuck feelings like i have no emotions Mm -hmm. but they're like the kind of people that you have to take your time with and then once you take your time with them they come around as far as like being emotionally available and again if you're not the kind of person who wants to put in time to make someone else feel like 
they should learn how to like have emotional intelligence. That's cool too. But I think when you date an Aquarius man, you have to have some kind of emotional intelligence for the both of y'all because they don't have it or they're not born with it. It's not innate. In my, opinion. <laughs> my mom is an Aquarius and she's just like, I don't know. She's super like um, affectionate and like emotionally available. But then my brother, who's an Aquarius, like, is what you're describing, Brie. Like, yeah, I don't men know. are very different. They're than very different. But then, like this guy that I was dating before, he's an Aquarius, and like the sex just wasn't it for me. But like our vibe was so dope, so that's why I think that Yo. I continued or whatever, like to have sex with him. But like, I mean, I did like show him. Like he got better at one point, but I think. That's when I liked him the most. And then, like, after I kind of, like, was over it, like, I just couldn't have sex with no one. But I still feel like I keep in contact with him. I still speak to him, like, on a daily basis. It's just I can't. Like, I, the, the sex just. Wow. Yo. So, okay. So, I'm a Virgo, everybody. A Virgo. Ah, yes. I love Virgos. <laughs> ah. All right. You're dating an Aquarius? That so like that. I've been, it seems like Aquarius have been coming into my realm lately. Like mm-hmm. the guys that I've just been meeting lately have been Aquarius, right? And so I had read this article. Like I've always been really into Virgos and knowing about my sign and being in touch with my Zodiac sign. Um, I've always, I try to look up on Sagittarius too, just because that's what Hove is, my bro. You know, be a Virgo, <laughs> but... <laughs> So I've been trying to explore each of the signs more and try to just learn more about them all because I am interested in astrology. So I had found this article that was titled The Signs and How They Cheat. Mm -hmm. And the one for Virgo was like, it was crazy. It was so me. It was so relatable. And just in a general, just it was like the first sentence was Virgos are masters at cheating. Like. But what it was saying was we don't we're how we move people not gonna know nothing unless we want them to know. know. Yeah. It was saying how um but we wouldn't even really put in the energy to do it in the first place because we would be so passionate, you know, about our partner uh, anyways. Yeah. And it was saying it was like a Virgo can love three different people at the same time and they not the people won't even know yeah yo when i read that sentence like i had chills because i was like yo that's me Mm -hmm. for real like i'm not in that situation so i'm not out here doing it like my i I was telling uh, my boo he's like so you could do that i'm like don't (laughs) worry it's not like i'm in three different relationships at the same time right now or anything (laughs) (laughs) but what i it was so funny because i've always said like for dudes or like when i have a son i'm gonna teach him like you, if you going to be a three woman man or whatever, you need to have finances for three women yeah. right. and you better be a 300% ass nigga yep. because you can't give, you can't divvy it up and then they each get in 33% exactly. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you could give 300%, then have three women. Yeah. They'll never know. Like as long as each of them satisfied and mm-hmm. they all getting what they need, whatever. So that was just really funny. So I kind of read about Aquarius. So the first Aquarius, um, what I had got from him was that like he was super cool, super, super cool, but that they weren't remember, they weren't memorable to me. Like they didn't have a, such a huge effect like how a Scorpio might come in and ruin your life or you know what I mean or whatever they didn't have that effect to me and then I met another one who I'm like really really into um we haven't had sex yet but that's funny because with the first one I was wondering like would the sex even be good because if you don't if you don't give me a memorable effect how do you give me a Ooh, the sex about yeah. to be bomb effect, mm-hmm. you know. So I was just like, damn. So I was just wondering if y'all had any input, but that's interesting. As far as like horoscopes, I'm a Gemini, so my attention span is literally like this big. <laughs> like, so like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like with me, like I get bored super quick. So with a guy, like I would be into a guy for like forever for like for really long but i think that it's because some part of him is still available like that i mean unavailable like it's weird like so i feel like if a guy just puts his all like in the first week i'm gonna get bored after that week because it's just like there's no more left to discover but 
if he takes his time with me and just like you know like it's it's about the chase right. i think i think with me like i'm like i like to get chased but i'm low-key a chaser it's it's really weird like i like guys to be on me but then i also like guys to like you know let me do some of the work too like let me like figure out like i also like projects so if something is wrong with you, unfortunately, I feel the need to figure out what it is to try and fix I it. I think all women like projects. Yeah, like it's. Yeah. I don't want to like I projects anymore, did. though. Like I'm tired of like I it. Wish we did. But for you, Dodge, I would say like definitely like it's cool. You can date because you're single, so you should be dating more than one person. Like you're not exclusive for anyone. I'm not telling you like to go sleep with all of them, but I think people really think that you're only supposed to date one person like dating is just getting to know someone it's not exclusivity it's not being in a relationship and i hate that people just feel the need that you have to just give them your loyalty like you have to earn my loyalty you have to show me that i should be or i should want to even be loyal to you like right i, I don't hate, make myself feel guilty I hate for that no mean. how i move with nobody right like, it's, it's a, a mean. single woman if you feel that I need to be exclusive or doing right. moving a certain way to please you, then we need to be together. We need to figure out how and that we're about takes to do that time. For each other. Like I'm just over like the popcorn machine relationships that like you meet a guy the first week, by the third week, like bro, I don't, I don't even know if I like you because like it that. falls apart super yeah. quick when it happens like that. But that's all, because yes. everything is being rushed. Like, Y'all don't it's know each nothing. other that well. You're gonna after three weeks. You are gonna still keep finding it's so much more to find out about a right. person after three weeks. In, in I, and I mean, end, I used to be that girl, honestly. That like. like in my teens, I was super big. Not saying that I'm not big on relationships now, but I was super big on like if I'm talking to you, you got to be my boyfriend. Like you know, high school, even with college, like my freshman year, college, I feel like I. I mean, I'm happy for that relationship because it was like my real first relationship. But I also feel like I didn't really get to like enjoy certain things and not saying being single but like really getting to know my own independence as a person as a woman like going off to school and I'm in a relationship by November of my freshman year of college like I wasn't alone you know like mm-hmm. I didn't really get to get you that you didn't time. even get to see all the niggas yet not it, exactly like <laughs> the first thirsty third so <laughs> like I swear it was I got to school one week the upperclassmen moved in like the next week we had our first thirsty Thursday I had got my prospect and it was like I just like literally put my freaking hooks into him and then that was my nigga for like the next three years two years and I feel like yo it wasn't until after that relationship that I was able to deal with just me. Like, Mm -hmm. I missed all those core things. So now when I feel like I'm supposed to be settling down and looking for a relationship, I'm having too much fun being me because I feel like for so many years I was with a person. Like, I don't want my identity to coexist with who I'm, like, with. That's, like, a big thing for me. Yeah. Like, I've never been, like, I've had boyfriends, like, all the time, but I've never been huge, like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't. I was it was never my goal to be in a relationship. Every mm-hmm. man I meet is not my goal to be in a relationship with right. you because I'm very like full of myself right. and like wanna keep me just me. Like I'm, right. I'm I have issues with um being a partner because I'm so like independent. Yeah. yeah. Like, Yo, and that's too. a Virgo thing. Like, it's Virgo, a Virgo. Yeah, I was like, just about like... to say that's such a Virgo <laughs> thing and it I meet people and you know you'll be dealing with them and you yeah, it's so much energy. It's so much going on, up and down, different emotions, stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it'll be over with, and you be at home in your bed, probably a little bored and lonely, but you'll be like, but damn, this feel good. Yeah. Man. Yes. I, that was a headache. Yeah. That was too much. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be alone. And people don't understand that. Like, I'd really rather not be bothered. Yeah. Or I, I always like tell things. people, I don't do dysfunctional relationships, mm-hmm. period. I'm not doing it because I love myself enough that I can be alone. I don't need somebody else coming in disrupting what I have going on my peace of mind. Big on my partner having a life outside of me because I'm always going to have a life outside of. I'm always going to like you know how people say you complete me. Like I don't fuck with that notion. No, I'm a full ass person, right? Right. And you're a full ass person. (laughs) Okay, we gonna be full ass people together. Together. (laughs) I'm I'm definitely learning more now how to not be so um 
consumed with the relationship. Like I, my next relationship or whatever, I want it to be to feel yeah more adult where you do have both y'all own things going on and y'all just have like like right now me and a guy we see each other on the weekends because of Monday through Friday work schedule yeah. and I think that that's so. It's refreshing and it's cute and it's like, oh, we do the weekends when he right. off or whatever. But don't like, wait a minute, cause SZA. <laughs> I was thinking that too. Ain't like, no, I'm, no, no, I'm the weekend. Ain't no, uh, no we do. No, but eventually I got to deviate from the schedule. No, our first date was on the hook. Y'all be quiet. Every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> our first date was on a weekday. So yeah, it was on a Monday, but it was like. Sis said, I'm going to take you know the what? weekend. Be quiet. It was on a weekday, <laughs> but for the most part. You got to say it like that, Dodge. Be quiet. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, just. She used the word refreshing too. She said. It's so refreshing to be the weekend. It, it, no, it, no, I didn't say to be the weekend. You know what? I'm done with this. Because yeah. only, I'm, okay, I'm just saying that because, like, sometimes I know, okay, for example, like, I've been with dudes where mm. we spend so much time together and I could be out doing something, but I'd be so thirsty to get back home to be with him, mm -hmm. to smoke, whatever, and I might miss out on an opportunity or staying out later with my friends in yeah. the city. I'm thirsty to go back to Brooklyn to be laid up so what i'm saying is us not being all consumed in each other during the weekdays gives me that peace of mind to just be like okay dodge you totally focused on you your brand your career right. you're not yeah. thinking about mm -hmm. getting back to this dude or whatever you know yeah. what I, that's what i'm yeah. that's what yeah. i was mean okay. by it's refreshing no, okay that's okay cool. okay all right <laughs> it's um like right now like as far as like y'all know my dating life is like literally a shit show but Ever since I'm about to be, you know how like what 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 did Kanye say like when he was just like after he got his Kanye was playing the girl. That's how I feel about my little vibrator because once I got this, like my tolerance to deal with things and people is just super short. Like mm -hmm. once Mine I feel too, like well, I, it didn't take a vibrator, but yeah, because that's yeah. I, honestly I started to realize that's really all <laughs> I be mean, wanting. Yeah, I had that like, moment for myself when I started to entertain myself alone so i started yeah. going out and doing stuff by myself where i didn't feel like i had to be partnered with someone when i did things so like even if the sex is good or right. whatever i'm like you're not worth my company you're like you're not right. worth my time like why are you sitting across from me right now at this i could have went to this restaurant by myself like right. you do not need to be sitting across this, across from me i had um i had like wrote this is when i was blogging like a couple years ago and that was one of my blog posts. I like had made a challenge to like take myself out on dates, like whether it was to the. And then I ended up falling in love with just going to the movies by myself. Do you know how annoying it is to be sitting next to someone in the movies and they're talking to you? Yeah. Like I'd rather go alone too. I do. I do so much stuff alone. Like, like me and do. I do so much stuff alone and like me and angel dj 9 a.m we talk about it all the time because she's originally from vegas mm -hmm. i'm from rochester upstate new uh -huh. york so we talk we like talk about all the time how it's it's so easy to feel lonely in this big old city and yeah. you know it's so many people but right. it's you meet people every day and we work jobs and but it's everybody you're not gonna click with or you right. you know what I mean or be a lifelong person in your life like thank God for y'all or whatever but we definitely be talking about how it's lonely and just ever in since city. being here I do I have to do so much by myself because yeah. I moved here alone so mm -hmm. I don't like I grew up here and I just feel like you know how you feel like you're alone I feel like this city is cluttered like it's the opposite for me so when I do stuff by myself, it's because, like, yo, like, I'm surrounded by people all the time. Well, no, that, of course there's so many people. But no, I'm but talking I'm talking about, about as far as, like, like in the city just growing up. Like, being here, all right, so, what well, like, just I'm going to just do summers, New York summers. It's like, you go to the pool with your friends. You go to the, you go to the block parties with your friends. Then you go to these midnight cookouts with your friends. It's like you're always with people doing something, surrounded by people, like, I wish that, like, I mean, I'm happy that I'm, I mean, I'm 24 and I learned the value of really just going out by yourself, but 
it was so imperative back then as a teenager to just go into the city and just go get ice cream by myself. Like, I feel like I really want to instill that in my children that I have. Like, it's okay. You don't have to do everything with your friends. You don't, you can miss that party and go to the movies. Like, you can go to dinner by yourself. Like, at, you know, 19, at 20, at 21, because you feel the need to start depending on needing friends when you're older to do everything because you was attached at the hip as yeah. kids. Or needing people, period, because... So I mean, I'm the only need child we do too. Need people you need it. people, but I'm talking about as far as being independent and needing mm-hmm. somebody to lean on, or like being grown and you live on your own. But you don't. If you maybe late on rent or something, you don't know how to go and get it on your own. Yeah. You always looking towards That's a parent a or a friend. Like I think that independence and just independence in general is very important. Yeah, it is, but. I don't know Kevin Hart who's married to like that beautiful girl Nico I think that's her name basically like released a um a video on Instagram apologizing to his family for basically cheating he never said he was cheating he was just like I have a target on my back one I just want to quote that it's hard being a comedian and trying to be serious because like what he was saying was real stuff but it you was can't funny. Take him serious, right? He started off the video with like um, and you know that is a Kevin Hart joke about to come after the um, like, and it's like, damn, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna feel for him, but this shit is so hilarious that I can't take you serious. But I'm sorry. Anyways, he basically like is getting um was about to get blackmailed. A woman was basically in store him for a couple million just so he she went and like released the video of them. Um, again, I I don't know if I know, but. I should know that he's married. He's just actually a year in of marriage. His, His wife, wife is pregnant. pregnant. Um, yeah. So it, it he it came out at the craziest time. It's like, damn, y'all only been married a year. She's pregnant with y'all first child together. Like y'all first child. You know, he has other children. So what do y'all think? Honestly, I I I I like his approach to telling the truth. It's just like I'm not about to give you even though it should have never been done in the first place, but it's like, I'm going to do, you think you're going to have one of them? I'm going I'm to do you one better. I'm going to let the world know. Like, I did this. I'm sorry. So, like, what are y'all thoughts on it? Like, I mean. I don't, I don't understand why he had to make us be a part of all of that. Like, that's true. That's what I was he just about to say. It ain't my relationship. Said, I don't care. could just, well, you know, my wife know about the tape and what. Like, it could have been that. You didn't have to fucking embarrass yes. this woman another time over yeah. for you to fucking look like you the victim. Like, you're not because the fucking victim. You're not it, the victim. He's you're not the victim cheated. at all. But at the same time, we were going to be involved because, it. like, I don't think, um, definitely he's worried about what his, his wife and family thinks or whatever. But let's be real. Like, I'm pretty sure she was saying, I'm going to put this tape out to the world. Not, I'm going to just send it privately to your wife. So, like, these people are celebrities, like, so I get it, like, we shouldn't be involved, but we're involved because they are who we're looking at all the time. Like, that's what celebrity, like, just even thinking about being a celebrity is kind of stressful. It's just like, do you really want that, do you really want that spotlight? Because it's things like, you got to do stuff like this. Like, shit like this happens every day. No, no, no shade to like, you know, I'm not saying, yes, he's not a victim, but girls get cheated on every single day. There are wealthy men in the world that's not celebrities that get blackmailed and extorted every day. It's just because he's Kevin Hart. He's a celebrity. I don't know. I think for me personally, I don't see it as like this huge extortion thing because I'm sure he was giving her money anyway. He was paying this woman off anyway. But as soon as she kind of took the power and said, I need this, like up the money like way more Mm -hmm. then it was like nah now now let me stop like you was giving that that woman money anyway you was you was playing a game anyway kevin like let's not act like all of a sudden like all of a sudden she just had this idea to ask you for 10 million dollars like you was paying her off like we know the game you're a rich man you 
You're a rich man. You're giving women money. To she shut set up. the bar. The, <laughs> like, she said, she did, I'm not even going to hold she you. Did. Did. Let, let Rick Ross be married and come slide my way. I need $20 million, Ross, right and, now. But even if, like, so let's say that it is women who are extorting mm-hmm. these men and doing all these things. Why not, though? One, why not? One, why not? And two, then fucking don't do this shit. Right. If we we in this world just trying to get money off these motherfuckers because they think, oh, they always think we money, trying money Mm -hmm. off bitches, then... Why mess with us? Exactly. Because I saw so many men dragging the girl like, oh, you going to ask him for money? Why not? He asked her for pussy, though. He asked her for pussy, though. Why not? Over and over and over. Like... So, with this whole scandal, let's play a game called Marry, Cheat, Extort. So it's it's kind of like marry, fuck, kill, but marry, marry cheat. I like this because we get money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I'm gonna put I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go first with three guys. So I'm gonna say Diddy, Jay Z, and Dr. Dre. Wait, <laughs> Wait tell oh, me what's the who, three would again? who would you marry? Who would you marry? Who would you cheat on? Who would you extort? Marry, cheat. I need to write this down. So okay, I think I got mine. Yeah, I got mine. But you go first. I would marry Jay Z. Okay. I would cheat on Diddy, and I would extort Dr. Dre. Because ain't he a billionaire now? Yeah, um, that's exactly my order. <laughs> and I heard, like, you know, there's rumors about him, like, beating him women. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Give, me, give me the shmoney. <laughs> give me the shmoney, or I'm telling the world that you fucking me up on the low. All right? <laughs> Wait, did y'all all marry Hove? Did oh, you actually, marry Hove? I, I don't want to marry Hove. I'm sorry, that's my brother. I, I think I'm. I think I'm. A, I'm gonna marry Diddy, and I'm a. Um, I'm a cheat on Hove. I can't marry Diddy. Like we'll be competing for attention and shit. Like the reason why I think that I would like cheat on Hove, cause, and this is just me and my like ego sister. He is like I think that he's such for like power, and he's like real ego driven. And that will irk me. So you know what? You think you all lot? Let me cheat on you real quick to show you. <laughs> Simmer down, sis. You know, like, relax. So I think that's why. That would just be, like, I, and I, I fuck with Hove, and I love Hove, but I, w- I would cheat on him. I love Hove. I will marry Hove, cheat on Dave East, and extort 50. I never, I never, but I never <laughs> said Dave East. I never said 50. Like, where did that come oh, from? Oh, wait, we got to choose the people that you choose? Yes. Because I don't know this name. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm like, Wait, Dave I'll Easton. Wait, say, <laughs> that say funny. sis, <laughs> she be dumb hyped to throw Dave East name in every episode. Like, yeah. relax. He is on 117th and 5th Avenue. Go see him. I'm dying. No, I really, clearly, no, nah, yeah, I don't know the game like they that. So, so say to people. <laughs> so it's Mary, Cheat, Extort, Diddy, Hove, Dr. Dre. So Oh, sure. so Diddy, Hove, and Dr. Dre. Yeah. So I just got to put them in order. Mm-hmm. So put them in order. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I will marry Hove. Mm-hmm. Cheat on. Mm, I would cheat on Diddy because he kind of corny to me. Yeah. And extort Dre. All right. Yeah. So we all on the same. Page. Yeah, we all on the all same right. page. Everybody will marry Hove. He got the perfect swag. Y'all no, know I I'm said, looking for I'm my Hove. Hove. So she oh, said, she did, she did, she did, she did. I said I'm, I'm cheating not on cheating Hove. on him. That's the perfect man right there. Ha- I don't know about all of that. Yeah, I think so. But- I think so. Everybody knows. Yeah. Okay. So name your three guys. Please do not put Dave East. Those also oh, now I just gotta yeah, put you gotta three pick your men. three guys. You never played this in school. No, y'all no. Um all right, well, I'll keep going. I have more guys. Yeah, you do the guys. Um Rick Ross, Nipsey Hussle, or I gotta go with some of these people. I don't know who You don't know who Nipsey Hussle is? I don't or? know what he looked like. Oh, yeah, look him up. He's fire. Um, so I'm gonna say what I said. Um, Nipsey Hussle. Who's the other guy? I just you said? said Rick Ross, Rick Nipsey Ross, Hussle. and Fab. Oh, that's a good one. Don't extort Rick Ross, Dodge. <laughs> Cheat on him though. So no, get... I'm gonna. Yeah. All right. I, so I, all right. So I'm gonna marry. I'm gonna marry Nipsey Hussle. I'm gonna marry Nipsey. I'm gonna cheat on Fab, and I'm gonna extort Ross. I just told you not to do that, and you're gonna do it. Right. Run me my money. <laughs> you want to extort who? I'm extorting Ross. I'm a Mary Nipsey hustle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm a Mary Nipsey because he chill. I like his. I like his vibe Damn too. Nancy. He's calm. Hmm. 
and he's in he, and he dates Lauren London. So I just feel like you know, a woman like is, her. It's is crazy a woman because like I have mad pictures I don't of really, Russ. I know who Nipsey Hussle is, but I don't pay him any attention. Right. Mm. I don't really pay him attention and either. Then, at this point, Fabulous is just an Instagram model. So like, I'm like not really. Oh, that was shade, girl. That was a shade. <laughs> we got quiet. Don't <laughs> yeah. really know what to say to that. Yeah, like, don't a, do that to Fab. He's an Instagram Fab. model. Don't do Fab. He's an Instagram model. All right, so who you married yeah. cheating in? I think I will extort Rick Ross because he's a rapist. Okay, let's let's clear the air. <laughs> he's not a rapist, but let's... he has rapist rapist shit in songs. Um, you know, um, I guess I'll marry Nipsey because I know nothing about him, so I have no reason to like not fuck with him, and I'll. Cheat on Fab. Cause he a cheater. He do a cheat on Emily anyway. That's why I said so, Well, yeah, I know. Cheat on him, right? I'm gonna marry Rick Ross. I'm gonna marry him. I am going to marry. Watch Rick your Ross. drink, girl. Watch your drink. No, cause we only gonna be drinking Bel Air. We gonna have our own <laughs> bottles. I don't gotta worry about that. <laughs> um, I'm going to cheat on Nipsey, cause I don't. I'm not really. This. And I know this goes against everything I said earlier about the light skin and dark skin, but I'm really not into light skin men. I'm sorry, I just can't, especially with braids, can't do it. Um, and I'm gonna cheat on Fab. Only that's what I was. I said I was gonna cheat on who? Yeah, cheating on Fab, extorting. I mean, extorting Fab, cheating on um, Nipsey. Nipsey. I'm wanna extort Fab, but not for money. I, I need him to give me all them sneakers he got because his his swag is just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah so I'm gonna. I'm going to make him buy all my clothes. Like, you know. So all right. Let do. me do three. But mine are like very random. All right. Okay. So Lorenz Tate, mm. Robin Thicke, and Meek Mill. He was a random, but I guess you need a random. So Lorenz Tate, Robin Thicke, and Meek Mill. I got to extort Robin. I can't do the pink deck. Sorry. Um, Lorenz <laughs> Tate. I'm going to marry Lawrence Tate because I love, 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 love Jones. That's my favorite movie. And, yeah, that is your favorite. You say it every episode. It's true. <laughs> and I'm going to cheat on Meek Mill only because that's just, that's the last option. <laughs> um, mine is the same. I'm going to marry Lawrence Tate because, like, who the fuck went? Right. Right. Um, uh. Definitely cheating on Meek Mills because, like, he's just mad loud. Like, like Ryan, I got to go fuck with a quiet nigga. <laughs> she, like, calm down. <laughs> like, the fuck? And who was the other one? Robin, Robin Thicke. Thicke. Yeah, yeah, I can't do the pink penis either. I can't. Uh, I'm not even on my little vibrator pink, but that is different. Nah. It's like, <laughs> well. It looks like a dog penis. Like, I can't. I'm going to marry Lorenz <laughs> Tate. Mm-hmm. I'm going to cheat on Robin Thicke. I do pink dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lie I'm for a, that yeah. shit. Hey. <laughs> I'm a rap. Going to extort Meek Mill? Yeah, I'm going to extort Meek. I need that Rolly. What do you get when you want to extort You, you get that Rolly and, and that, and that Rafe. What do you now you're okay. playing out. You get the Rolly. You get the Rafe. You get the chain. You get, you get, what? You get the Louis you get the messenger bag. Line. You get the new clothing line coming <laughs> out. What? You get the Pumas. You get the high water <laughs> pants. <laughs> You get you get the city of Philly on your back. Right. You get the streets. <laughs> you get the bikes. What? Nah, we. Yeah. Oh, let's. I got a good one. This could be. This could this be the last one. one. This Wait, could be you the, don't have three. I'm like, I'm cool with y'all. Okay. This okay. This could be, could be the last one. Cameron, Jewels, Jim Jones. Damn. I'm about to marry Jewels. But actually, no, no, no. Nah, I'm marrying Joels because that was always my man. I'm loyal. And then I'm going to um, cheat on Cam and I'm going to extort Jones. Nah, I, I'm going to marry Jim. I'm going to extort Cam. I'm going to cheat on Joels. Can I just run a train on them? <laughs> <laughs> They would be there, like that's um, the option. Run the train for that dick. Hey. <laughs> Subway on that dick. Gang on that dick. <laughs> no, I think I would marry Cam. Um, why? Cam is so obnoxious. That's why to I me. like it. I don't know. I like dickheads. Um, I would marry Cam. Um, extort Jewels and cheat on Jim. Jim. Yeah. All right. All right. So we all know we some get money hoes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry, Marcus. <laughs> See, yes, we are Carefree Black Girls will be in Atlanta. Boop, boop. It's lit. Um, hopefully Dave East won't be there because then Dodge is gonna have me honestly find Dave East missions in Atlanta. No, honestly, I'm over it. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm not that deep onto Dave East no more. Allegedly. No, seriously. Air no. quote. Seriously, seriously. That's I'm into my regular guy. No, 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 guys. No. If he walked in here right now. He, I would be like, he looked good, but I'm not like really. <laughs> Anyways, so the Carefree Black Girls will be in Atlanta for A3C Festival. The Carefree Black Girls stage will be hosted by, of course, us, the Carefree Black Girls ladies, as well as Flocka. Um, the performance is amazing. Kia Lacey, Clo the God, Brax Attacks, Amaretta. And of course, rocking this stage would be DJ 9am and Akasha. So come check us out. We're going to have like the henna. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have eyebrow bar, games, melanin. It's going to be lit. And the location will be at Delightful Eats. So definitely come check us out. Say what up. Tell us what exactly a carefree black girl is to you. If you see one of us in A3C. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. Thank you, Queen. For coming. Thanks for having me. Shout out your social mediums. Where can the people find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at the Queen Speaks underscore, and that's Instagram too. I use the same. I use the same handle for everything. Everything. So just look for that, and you'll find the me. Queen Speaks. The Queen Speaks. Thank I, you. First off, I'm totally digging your vibe. Like you're so dope. You got to see her with these blue dreads. Yes. I'm all over <laughs> the fact that Thank she you. a Virgo too. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> We got that magnetic energy over here. They wearing the same color over here. (laughs) Y'all just getting me more hype. All right. Relax. (laughs) Y'all lucky Beyonce's a Virgo. So I really love y'all. But um, you guys can find me, Ivy Like Blue. Definitely check out Iconic. Shout out to Kirby's Cup. He's now the sponsor of Iconic, which is super cool. So, yes, thank you for that. Um, Check out the Ivy Show. Check out every Monday I do a live where I basically tell you if your music is trash or not on my Instagram. So I be like blue every Monday, 10. It was from 10 to 11, but now it's 10 to 12 because they really be sending me like 40 songs. Like, and I used to cut it short, but it's so much fun. Like, so that's, but yeah, so definitely like definitely get in tuned with everything that I'm doing. Dodge. You can find me on Instagram, everything and why. Um, Hype Bay should be releasing an article pretty soon you know the the rapper malibu mitch yeah malibu i mitch. styled her for an interview she had with hype bay last week okay. super dope so that should be coming out soon um yeah i've just been shooting for my lookbook i forgot to plug my podcast um, yes <laughs> the queen and jay my podcast you can find that anywhere itunes stitcher google Play, all the app all the app all the app the podcast places and um you can check out my magazine that's mixvixenmag.com um i'm having a promotional party for it later this month i haven't secured a date yet um of course y'all are invited yes. um Yay. but yes yeah. check out mixvixenmag.com is, is that it is it online only yes yeah, an online magazine okay but like we have this series called Ms. Vixen irl okay. where we do a live event okay okay um, so okay. in october that'll be one of our live events to you know take it off the computer for the month of october unfortunately i'm going to be super super busy so i won't be able to record but y'all can keep up with me on twitter at where she begins and then um on instagram at brianna danielle underscore in case y'all didn't know my cookbook is now out um, you can find that at where she begins.com in the shop section and I'm giving a discount for people who come via, who buy the cookbook via the podcast. So if you type in CFBG pod, um, you'll get some coins off at checkout. So go do that. Share with a friend. Also, just keep up anything plant-based Brie across all platforms if you're only interested in knowing my life. 
from the food aspect and don't care about what I say personally, which is fine. I will not be offended. Um, but I miss y'all there in the studio. I hope y'all have a good month. Have fun at, um, in Atlanta. I'll be there in spirit. I'm sure I'm going to be living through my text message thread, wishing I was actually there. But yeah, y'all have a good week and a good month. Okay, okay. Dope. And then you can follow us. Yes. Follow us on Twitter at CFBG pod on instagram at carefree blacker underscore inc and definitely send us some stuff if you have any questions um comments concerns you can definitely add us on twitter or email us at carefree blacker podcast at gmail.com definitely follow the hashtag to follow up and keep up with the conversation yes. and if you see us in atlanta come say hi because i've been seeing yes. a couple of my friends on my timeline posting that they're going performing us some and it's gonna be I'm our excited. first time in atlanta so definitely show us a good time and yeah. we out Shop Amazon for last minute gifts. Great deals for everyone on your list. Gifts for mom and gifts for dad. Even for your sister and your brother Chad. Ah shoot, we didn't realize we were supposed to get a gift for our dog walker guy. We almost forgot about our dentist, Dr. Kerr. We didn't expect to get a gift from her. Or our cousin, I forget his name. He got us something nice, better reciprocate. For last minute deals on gifts for people you forgot. Get fast and free shipping at Amazon.